there are different elements of what we do as teachers in the classroom. <clears throat> and the two, there are the two, I mean, in, we do things that are incredibly complicated. So this is very simple minded. But it's like two of the things that we do are number one, we explain things. And number two, we create opportunities for kids to explore things. So we have these two elements of explanation and exploration in going on in the classroom. And part of the skill of us as teachers is how we juggle those two things. Now, if you're, so if you're a direct instruction, or I prefer the phrase didactic teaching, direct instruction is complicated because it's, it's, it's a brand, it's a patented version, capital D, capital I, is Rosen Shine's approach to teaching, which he calls direct instruction. But also small d, small i, it broadly refers to a didactic approach or an approach. What lies behind that is teachers saying, it's just more efficient if I tell them. Right? It saves time. Why would we bother with all this sort of fannying about and kids trying to find things out for themselves? They couldn't possibly invent Pythagoras' theorem for themselves. So it just makes good sense to tell them. Now, up to a point, yes. But if you just do that, the evidence shows that if, if your teaching goes too far in that direction, if you preempt explanate exploration by always giving an explanation up front, then there are costs to that. It may be less efficient to allow exploration time or what the EL people call grapple time it may be less efficient, but if you value the development of kids' curiosity and their perseverance and their creativity, then you, you have to have exploration time because that's what helps to build those muscles. If it's just explanation after explanation after explanation, that pins you as a learner in a very passive what place. Your job is just to understand and remember what you've been told, right? So it's a balance, isn't it? And it's a balance that we are constantly juggling as teachers. We may have to do a bit of explanation up front in order for the kids' exploration to be productive. We might have to frame it a bit rather than just throwing, throwing them in the deep end. That's why some of the didactic learning people polarize this so much that they think that they only talk about something which they call pure discovery learning or pure inquiry learning. As if somehow or other, if you wanted, if you were doing in discovery or inquiry, that somehow prohibited you from doing any explaining or framing or setting things up the first, the first way around. So what, my, what that book is about is about trying to re- re-engage teachers with the complex shifting dynamic interplay between exploration and explanation. 